You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 5. A protest planned for this morning in Venice after a car struck four bike riders last week. We'll have a live preview of that protest. Plus, Mexican drug lord El Chapo's trial starts today. The charges he's facing. And finally, election day is tomorrow. We'll tell you about the final push for votes. Good morning, Suncoast starts right now. And here we are, live in living color, 5 o'clock. Monday morning, I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Jess Daldrick. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to head right over to meteorologist John Scalzi to see what your forecast looks like for the week. Yeah, it looks pretty good, actually. Everything is kind of shaping up to be a pretty tame Monday morning. We're looking at some scattered showers that exist across the northern tier right now, but that's really not bother us, the northern part of the state, I should say. That really isn't going to bother us. It's stuck there. That's the warm front, actually, that brought us a few scattered showers around yesterday. Right now, everything quiet. I think the morning commute should be a OK, we're looking at temperatures that are a little bit warmer, though. 72 Mayaka, 72 Bradenton, uh, Sarasota coming in at 71. And as we head into the next 24 hours, I think we'll see more of the same. That is temperatures running well above where we normally would find ourselves. This is the temperature change over 24 hours, and you can tell we're really warm. Temperature coming in at about uh, 86 degrees this afternoon, and it'll be a humid one as well. Back to you guys. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic now. Here's the scene first off in Manatee County. Some buildup on 14th Street West southbound as you get around State Road 70 and also around 69th Street. Checking farther south, we'll find out how it's doing now in the northern half of Sarasota County. The only uh, color right now on the screen there, so to speak, is along the bayfront. Some congestion, some caution there between the Ringling Causeway and uh, Orange Avenue. And then farther south, we'll check that. Not much to report right now as of 501 on your Monday morning. Happening today, some residents of the Meadow Run community in Venice are advocating for change at one busy road where four cyclists were struck and they're struck by a car last week. Those residents plan to protest this morning. Marla Spence now is live on Center Road near Rockley Boulevard near the Plantation Country Club. She's got a live preview for us now. Marla? Hey, Ray and Jesse, yeah, those protesters are expected to be right here on Center Road in East Village Drive in Venice. They want to protest and advocate for the speed limit to be reduced from 45 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour. And in addition to that, they also want a traffic light to be placed out here. Now, this protest comes after almost a week following a woman hitting four cyclists, leaving them all injured in this area. Now, take a look. This is video from that accident that happened on Tuesday when a 91 year old woman hit all four cyclists. Now, as of yesterday, we were told one of the four cyclists was released from the hospital while one is now in stable condition and the other two remain in serious critical condition. Now, we're also told the four cyclists are a part of Coastal Cruisers Bicycle Club and a club consisting of more than 500 members. Now, those members tell us they have reason to believe their fellow club members were hit due to the speed limit and safety hazards out here on this road and that that they were uh, weren't hit because lack of experience. When we select for a group ride, uh, we talk about safety. Uh, we go over some of the basics of traveling in a group, uh, and we are making sure that we're communicating with each other uh, during the course of the ride. Now that protest is expected to happen as early as 845 this morning out here on Center Road and East Village Drive in Venice. We will keep you updated with the latest once those protesters head out here, hoping that the state will make changes to Center Road. Reporting live in Venice, I'm Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you, Marla. A developing story now this morning. FHP says a driver struck and killed a man Saturday night in Manatee County and then drove off. It happened just before 9 p.m. at 301 Boulevard East and 41st Avenue East in Manatee County. Troopers say a 64-year-old Bradenton man was walking across the street when he was struck. The driver fled the scene. Troopers are looking for the driver of a black 2006 to 2008 Chevy Silverado pickup truck. If you can help, please contact the Florida Highway Patrol. Happening today, the trial of notorious Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo. Guzman starts 
in New York. He is accused of having a hand in dozens of murders, using his drug cartel to smuggle more than 200 tons of cocaine into the United States and even pulling off running the massive operation from behind bars. That's when he wasn't busy escaping from jail twice. He faces life in prison if convicted. Proceedings get underway today with jury selection. Opening statements will likely start the following week. Well, election day is tomorrow and the two most active politicians aren't even on the ballot. President Trump and former President Obama are making their rounds on behalf of their respective candidates. As ABC's Stephanie Ramos tells us now, ma the majority control of Congress is at stake. The president is closing out the midterm campaign with a mad dash, campaigning today in Ohio, Indiana, and Missouri. Control of the House and Senate is at stake, but so is President Trump's agenda. We overcame the Democrat smear campaign and confirmed the newest member of the United States Supreme Court. Our latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows Democratic House candidates leading Republicans by 52 to 44 percent among likely voters. But for them to win the Senate, they need to gain two seats, and that means winning in states won by President Trump. States the president is focusing on as he sticks with his key theme, immigration. Democrats are openly encouraging millions of illegal aliens to break our laws. The caravan of migrants that includes women and children fleeing violence and poverty in Central America is still nearly 700 miles away. But Democrats, they're out with their own heavy hitter, President Obama. They're telling us that the single most grave threat to America is a bunch of like poor, impoverished, broke, hungry refugees. That's like the thing that's really going to threaten Gary, Indiana. Obama made campaign stops in Indiana and Illinois, hitting Republicans on health care. They have declared war on Obamacare. They've declared war on the Affordable Care Act and all the provisions in it. Voter turnout is expected to break records this midterm election. More than 80% of voters surveyed in our most recent ABC News Washington Post poll. Republicans and Democrats, they say they will definitely vote. On Capitol Hill, Stephanie Ramos, ABC News. Early voting has ended for the general election, but there is still time to make your voice heard. Election day is tomorrow. Sarasota County has already seen record voter turnout. More than 136,000 people have already voted early or sent in a vote by mail ballot. There are 318,000 registered voters in the county, so that puts the turnout already over a whopping 42%. That's almost a 90% increase when compared to the early voting turnout for the 2014 general election. The Sarasota County Elections Office has received more than 77,000 vote by mail ballots. They had to reject a few because Florida law requires the signature on the registration book match the signature on the back of the absentee ballot. Now there's a way you can check to see if your ballot was accepted. We have a link on our website. Check it out at mysuncoast.com. Students across the country are planning an election day walkout tomorrow. The move is meant to encourage young voters to head to the polls for midterm elections. More than 25 youth led activist groups are participating, including March for Our Lives. They're calling the effort Future Coalition. There have been similar nationwide school walkouts in the past to protest gun violence. You may have noticed prices going down at gas stations, and it's not just here on the Sun Coast. The average price of a regular grade gas in the U.S. has dropped eight cents a gallon in the past two weeks. It's now down to about 2.85 a gallon. According to the app Gas Buddy, the cheapest gas in Bradenton is 2.45, and in Sarasota you can find it for 2.55. A little better. We're just a few weeks away from Thanksgiving, but members of the community are already preparing to make donations. Starting today, you can drop off non-perishable food at the Sarasota Police Department's headquarters. They're located on Adams Lane in downtown Sarasota, not far from the Supervisor of Elections Office. City halls, police stations, and local schools throughout Manatee and Sarasota counties are also collecting food. It will all go toward the annual Mayor's Feed the Hungry Thanksgiving food drive. If you are a family in need of food this upcoming Thanksgiving, you can apply through the Manatee County Food Bank. If you like sand sculptures, this coming weekend is for you. The annual Siesta Key Crystal Classic begins on Friday. 24 master sand sculptors will be here from nine countries. 
There'll be live music and drinks on the beach till 9 p.m. Festivities start Friday and run through Sunday on Siesta Public Beach. Always a good time. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, police in Daytona Beach say a boy killed his mother after a dispute about grades. We'll have neighbors reaction. And coming up a little later in the hour, a father is speaking out after his daughter was killed in a shooting at a yoga studio over the weekend. The message he has for the community nationwide. It is 510 right now on this Monday morning. Peek outside our studio shows a well lit downtown area. Let's get the drive time forecast now from First Alert Meteorologist John Scalzi. It looks perfect for us actually. None of the inclement weather boxes are checked on the drive time forecast and we're looking at quiet conditions. The trip to work should feature some warm muggy conditions with uh, 70s. I should read mid 70s, not Mike 70s because I don't know what Mike 70s is. And then low 80s on the way home under humid conditions. Uh, drive the uh, Sarasota hub are all running on time according to the FAA. At least one serving uh, Sarasota Bradenton International. We'll have the complete forecast for you coming up in a few. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph, or tragedy. The Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. Blue 32, Blue 32, hut hut. It's the Ghetto Gridiron Challenge. The game's on to sell 2,000 vehicles. 12 teams compete for the number one spot. Score a great deal at every Ghetto dealership. Buy with zero down. Make no payments for 90 days. Choose from 14 of your favorite brands all on sale. Who will make it to the end zone? You decide. Rush to a Gettle location near you or visit Gettle.com. Gettle's got it. Enjoy fine wine and great foods all while supporting a great cause. It's the 17th annual Suncoast Food and Wine Fest happening Saturday, November 10th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Premier Sports Campus in Lakewood Ranch. Taste hundreds of wines from around the world and sample great food from the area's finest restaurants. All proceeds go to local charities and rotary projects. For tickets and information, visit SuncoastFoodAndWineFest.com. You like to pay less. That's why you made Honda Accord the best-selling mid-size car in America. Get the redesigned Accord, the North American Car of the Year, or Civic, a KBP.com Best Buy, for less than the competition. Like SUVs and trucks? Get Motor Trend's SUV of the Year, CRV, the eight-passenger pilot, or Ridgeline truck for up to $42.40 less. Today at your local Honda dealer. At Boys and Girls Clubs, it's not just about trying new things. Tanya, come here. Learning the right steps. Two, three, four. Or making contact. It's not just about exploring the future. It's about helping them build it. It's about making a connection. It's about proving every kid and teen who enters our doors has what it takes. Great futures start here. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can, too. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips. First alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So we're looking at pretty quiet conditions out there with a temperature of 71 degrees. We have a dew point to match, so that's 100% relative humidity, and obviously it feels kind of sticky out there. Uh, we have an east-southeast wind coming in at about 6 and uh, a fairly decent sky. We got a kind of a mix of clouds and clear sky. As we head into the afternoon, I think we'll have a lot of sunshine helping to boost our temperature up to probably about 86 degrees for a daytime high. Uh, 
it'll probably be a mix of sun and clouds. Uh, we'll see some banks of clouds rolling in. We've got a lot of cloud cover out in Gulf waters, and some of that is going to move across our area. Still, I think we'll get enough sunshine around to make it feel pretty darn muggy out there for this time of year. Right now, radar not showing anything going on locally, but we do have a few scattered showers down to the south, and the general trend for these showers will be to lift from the southern areas to the northern areas of the state, and that will probably continue on through the day today. So there's a slight little chance of a sprinkle or a passing shower during the morning hours. I think by afternoon that threat will basically go away and we'll be looking at mostly quiet conditions. We do have some showers to the north of us. This is a frontal boundary, the old warm front that actually moved through on Friday as a cold front and brought us that out of strong storms across the region and even severe weather and then it lifted back to the north as a warm front on Sunday making it feel a little bit more humid on Sunday than it did on Saturday. Saturday was perfect, right? Well, don't get excited. You're not going to see another one of those Saturday like days probably till we get till next weekend or maybe even a little bit after. So we've got across the nation right now a couple of areas of low pressure. One right back to the west of us is going to produce perhaps the potential for some severe weather as that frontal boundary dragging from it kind of drifts closer and closer to the coastline. A stalled frontal boundary located just to the north was the warm front. It's now kind of stalled out. It'll eventually start lifting northward and eventually just wash out, but until then it'll be a focal point for showers. The deep south sees the big thunderstorms rumble across that region today. Uh, increasing cloud cover, we'll call it breezy, late day showers and maybe a thunderstorm as we head into the uh, uh, probably the weekend. I don't think we'll see much before then. Scattered showers to the north of that, a few showers out in Gulf water lifting north. Again, the general trend will be a south to north motion for these showers. We stay relatively quiet, maybe an isolated patch of drizzle over the next several days. But if you're looking for the thunderstorms, they will be in the heart of the deep south. That's where there is the potential actually for severe weather today and a good potential at that. Tornadoes, gusty wind, large hail, all of those things uh, centered really right in parts of uh, central deep south. Then lifting off tomorrow toward areas of coastal mid-Atlantic, bypassing the state of Florida this time, leaving us with just a slight risk of a thunderstorm or two, but that'll be about it. Forecast, well, like I said, the Gulf water is filled with cloud cover, so we may see a little bit of cloud, but we'll also see some breaks in these clouds, some sunshine coming our way. Forecast looks like this. South wind coming in at about 10 knots, lightening up a little bit this afternoon. The southerly flow continues, and over the course of the next seven days, warm. Tomorrow for voting, no inclement weather to stop uh, people from going to the polls, but it will be warm and it will be humid. Guess what? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all warm and humid. A front approaches on Friday with a slight chance of showers, moves through on Saturday and stalls just to our south, but it will lower our temperatures just a little bit. Back to you. All right. Thank you, John. Taking a look at first alert traffic now. We begin, as always, in Manatee County. There's absolutely nothing to report. It's all clear right now. It's 618 on your Monday morning as we head further south into Sarasota County. Things are running Overall, pretty smoothly. Bee Ridge Road, you're seeing some slight delays if you are heading westbound. And on US 41, if you're heading southbound at the intersection of US 301. And there's nothing to report in southern Sarasota County at this hour. Authorities in Florida say a 15-year-old boy confessed to killing his mother at their home. As reporter Matt Lupoli tells us, now police believe the conflict began over the boy's grades. This reality was just, I just started crying out here because I like, you know, because I can't imagine getting that call or husband. To everyone who knew her, Gail Clavenger was a kind, caring wife, mom, and friend. Oh yeah, very compassionate. I'm going to miss her and I think it's a terrible tragedy. It's difficult even for Volusia County Sheriff's officials to grapple with how her life came to an end. It wasn't very emotional about it at all. Detectives say the victim's 15-year-old son, Gregory Ramos, strangled her, then reported her missing a day later. The two allegedly argued Thursday over his grades. Detectives say the son waited until his mother went to bed that night, choked her, got a wheelbarrow for her body, then found she was still breathing, so again choked the life from her. He drove around with her body, allegedly dumped the wheelbarrow in another town. Then deputies say he called two friends to help cover up the killing and stage a robbery at the family's home. It's those friends who helped lead detectives to a place the boys often met, a fire pit behind a church. 
That's where the victim's body was dug from a shallow grave. It's heartbreaking to sit down with the family because the family's lost everything. Detectives say after a few hours of questioning, the teenager confessed and seemed stunningly unapologetic, even proud of his plot. No sign of remorse whatsoever. He was a soulless individual who thought he was the smartest person in the room. Uh, he th also stated to us that he believes he deserved a Grammy for the way he performed with the 911 call. The two friends who led police to the body are also expected to face charges as well. Tragic story there near Daytona. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, Amazon is going above and beyond to boost holiday sales and add new Prime numbers. That story and more in today's Tech Bites. And an underwater experience like no other. But wait until you hear how much this night will cost you in the hotel. It is 520 right now on your Monday morning. Now we're taking a live look at the New York City skyline, an absolutely breathtaking wow. view this morning. It's about 51 degrees there now, a little chillier than what we're seeing here. And it feels even colder because the Jets lost yesterday. The Dolphins <laughs> beat them 13 to 6. Giants were off. We'll have more news after this on Good Morning Suncoast. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. We believe in patriotism. We believe in our nation's youth. We believe veterans earn their benefits through their service to our nation. We believe in a strong national security. We believe in our country. For 100 years, veterans have been impacting our nation through the American Legion, and we believe it makes a difference. If you believe, learn more at legion.org slash we believe. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org hope. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Teachers inspire our children and promote a lifetime of learning. So ABC7 and Get A Lot Automotive want to honor these chalkboard champions by giving them the chance to win $500. But we need your help. Go to mysuncoast.com slash chalkboard champions to nominate an outstanding teacher who's really making a difference. And each month we'll deliver $500 to one teacher in Sarasota County and one teacher in Manatee County. Go to mysuncoast.com and nominate your chalkboard champion today. Take a look at this. The Conrad Maldives Wrangless Island has opened the world's first ever underwater hotel residence. The two-story villa is set more than 15 feet below the Indian Ocean. It includes a private gym, bar, infinity pool, even an ocean-facing bathtub. 
The top floor, which is above the water, has a relaxation deck where you can sun yourself. It's not for everyone, though, mainly because of the price tag. A cool $50,000 per night will get you a room here, but it's only accessible via a four-night $200,000 package that includes a personal chef for all of the meals and use of a private boat. Hey, Ray, can I borrow $200,000? You will pay it back? All right. Maybe. I'll think about it. There's, <laughs> a, there's an undersea lodge in uh, Key West. Or oh, rather, really? uh, Key Largo, rather. Yeah. Key Largo. So it has happened before, not closer than India. but uh, Yeah, we'll have to try that one. I'd be first. a little claustrophobic underwater the entire time, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd be afraid that the water, something would happen, the water would come crashing in. That'd be a fear, yes. Amazon is looking to boost holiday sales by offering more free shipping. Details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Amazon has a holiday gift for customers. Beginning today, shipping is free with no minimum order. The online retail giant is trying to boost sales while giving customers a taste of what its Prime service is like. Those who already have Prime will get free same-day service on some items. And Elon Musk is giving us a first look at his plan to relieve Los Angeles traffic. It's a video of a two mile test tunnel. It says it, he says it'll carry cars and shuttles on electric skates as fast as 150 miles an hour. Musk says public test rides will start December 10th. And the first foldable phone is now for sale. For months now, reports have said Samsung was releasing a foldable phone, but California startup Royal beat them to it. The FlexPay goes from tablet to smartphone by folding like a book. It costs nearly $1,300. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a good day. With uncontrolled moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, you never know how your skin will look. And it can feel like no matter what you do, you're itching all the time. But even though you see and feel your eczema on the surface of your skin, an overly sensitive immune system deep within your skin might actually be causing your eczema. So help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is not a steroid, and it continuously treats your eczema even when you can't see it. At 16 weeks, more than one in three patients saw clear or almost clear skin, and patients saw a significant reduction in itch. Do not use if you are allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you have new or worsening eye problems, including eye pain or changes in vision. If you have asthma and are taking asthma medicines, do not change or stop your asthma medicine without talking to your doctor. Help heal your skin from within. Ask your eczema specialist about Dupixent. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. My name is Haley. I have fragile X syndrome. I work with Chartwells at Einstein's at FAU. I like being up front and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen. And this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I, know, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, 
Pat's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think it up. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 5.30. And she became a victim. It's a cruel irony. A cruel irony. A father in the community nationwide is mourning the loss of the lives lost in a shooting at a yoga studio in Tallahassee over the weekend. Well, that's a developing story right now. Protesters hit the streets in Iran after the U.S. begins new sanctions at midnight against that nation's economy. And a 98-year-old woman is singing her favorite team's fight song. Why that song is so special to her. Those stories and more right now on Good Morning Suncoast. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Glad you're up and have joined us this morning. I'm Jess Daldrick. And I'm Ray Collins. Saturday was picture perfect. John Scalzi, bring on some more of those for us, please. Don't you know? Wasn't that just fantastic? That cold front really did bring in some drier, less humid air. Well, it's back now. The, uh, the cold front that came through uh, went back north on Sunday as a warm front, and it's now kind of situated just to our north, producing some scattered showers up there. It's not coming back this way. It's basically going to wash out in place and we stay in this nice southerly flow, bringing us warm, humid conditions right straight through the next few days. Probably not a lot of rainfall, though, for the next, I'd say, three days until another frontal boundary starts to approach us on Friday. Um, before then, maybe an isolated shower as we head into Wednesday, but really the rain chances are below 20%. 71 degrees in Parrish, Bradenton, 72, 72, Lakewood Ranch, 71 in Sarasota, Venice and Inglewood both coming in at 73. Today, we'll top it out at about 86 degrees, well above average for this time of year. No rain in the forecast, just a mix of sun and clouds. Back to you. Thank you, John. First alert traffic right now in Manatee County. A little, uh, couple spots there, 301 northbound as you cross over 15th Street East, also State Road 70 as you go uh, eastbound toward the interstate. A little blip there on 14th Street West northbound at 70, also known as 53rd Avenue South there. Also Fruitville Road eastbound, some congestion there, otherwise pretty clear. And then our South County map will show us not much to report at 532 on your Monday morning. We're learning more now about the man who killed two women and injured five others in a Tallahassee yoga studio on Friday night. One of the victims was 21-year-old Mara Binkley. She's from Atlanta. Michael Seaton spoke with Binkley's father about his devastating loss. I can't process it. It's, it's just the worst. As investigators work to figure out what motivated a gunman to open fire at a yoga studio near Florida State University, this grieving father of 21-year-old Mara Binkley says he is trying to understand why his daughter's killer would carry out this violent attack in such a peaceful place. Mara truly lived a life of really devoted to peace, love, caring for others. On Saturday evening, we spoke by phone with Jeff Binkley. He told us that he and his wife Margaret are now in Tallahassee, where they've been surrounded by family and friends who are remembering their daughter as a young woman who dedicated her life to peace, love, and happiness. Her friends from Austin Elementary, Peachtree Middle, Dunwoody High. But the 2015 Dunwoody High School graduate wasn't just a great friend. She was also a superstar in the classroom. Her father told us that she earned an academic scholarship to FSU and was in the running for a Fulbright scholarship. She planned to graduate in May with a double major in journalism and German. But her real passion, her father told us, giving back to her community. Our last conversation, she was so excited about uh, the Teach for America. Jeff says his daughter may be gone, but now he's hoping her tragedy will lead to change. Have that be a vehicle for for change, to stem the tide of violence.
that threatens to literally overwhelm our society. Now we're learning more about 40 year old Scott Beerley, who police say shot six people and pistol whipped another before killing himself. Court records show he had been previously arrested for grabbing women. The motive for the shooting is under investigation. In the meantime, a vigil was held at Florida State yesterday for the two people killed in the shooting. 61 year old member of the faculty, Nancy Van Vessem, and a 21 year old Mora, who you just heard about. FSU's president, John Thrasher, said the shooting was a senseless and violent act. A developing story right now, protests are underway outside the U.S. Embassy in Iran in the wake of new U.S. sanctions against Iran. As reporter John Lawrence tells us, the sanctions took effect about five and a half hours ago. A massive protest in Tehran Sunday. Iranians upset with President Trump's decision to reimpose sanctions. And coming here to say, down with USA, down with Israel, and you're all of your friends. President Trump announcing the move last week in a Game of Thrones-like tweet. Well, the Iran sanctions are very strong. They're the strongest sanctions we've ever imposed. And we'll see what happens with Iran, but they're not doing very well, I can tell you. Iran is not doing very well. The latest sanctions had been lifted in 2015 as part of the nuclear agreement negotiated during the Obama administration. Sources close to the White House say Mr. Trump's call to bring sanctions back is an economic war on Iran. We are doing a big number on Iran. The White House says it'll lift the sanctions if Iran meets 12 conditions. Some analysts say these demands basically call for a total regime change. We are encountering a real fight with our main enemy, America, and they're using all the resources they have and organizing a battle against us. The European Union, France, Germany, and Great Britain released a joint statement that said they deeply regret the further reimposition of sanctions by the United States. I'm John Lawrence reporting. It is 536 right now. There's an article in this week's People magazine that mentions last year's disappearance of this Newtown boy. People Magazine has a section about eight unsolved disappearances, including about teenager Jabaz Span. He disappeared 14 months ago somewhere in Newtown. Investigators and Jabaz's family believe the boy may have witnessed a murder. If you have any information, please contact the Sarasota Police Department. They saw it spiraling down, so they're pretty sure it's a crash. Authorities are investigating this morning after one person died in a plane crashed into another in Ottawa over the weekend. Authorities say one of the planes crashed into a field. That pilot was pronounced dead at the scene. The other aircraft managed to land safely at the Ottawa International Airport. No one on the second plane was injured. The Transportation Safety Board is investigating. Developing overnight, a house under renovation exploded last night near Philadelphia. It happened about 8 p.m. Fortunately, nobody was home at the time. Witnesses say they could hear the explosion miles away. Early indications, a gas leak is to blame. Some of the best college tennis players in the country competed in Lakewood Ranch this weekend. The 2018 Lakewood Ranch Dick Vitale Intercollegiate Clay Court Classic included about a dozen men's and women's teams, including Michigan, Princeton, Notre Dame, and in-state colleges like Florida State and University of Florida. Players say they love coming down here for the event. We don't get to come down to Florida too often, being up north in Michigan. And it's great to get out of the cold a little bit, get down here and play on some clay, which is the only clay court tournament we play on being college athletes. So it's good. It's fun. Over the past year, eight years, the event has raised half a million dollars for cancer research. Money is raised through donations and sponsorships. Looking ahead to Wednesday, the Manatee Kennel Club will be presenting the Sheriff's Office with a check to help purchase a canine. The new patrol canine is 14 months old. Look at him. He has already been training with Deputy Keith Sutton. He'll cost about $14,000. A new tradition is coming to Lakewood Ranch this Thanksgiving weekend will be the first Lakewood Ranch Seafood and Music Festival happening on Main Street, November 24th and 25th. Top local bands and artists will be performing and there will be an abundance of seafood dishes to choose from. General admission is free. It's a song some Green Bay Packers fans may never have heard of or even knew existed, but a 98 year old fan has been singing this song for more than nine decades. Take a listen. Go, you Packers, go and get them. 
Go, you fighting fools of Saddam. Smash that line with all your might. A touchdown, Packers. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> That's the Packers' original fight song. Dorothy Vanderloop says she learned it when she was six years old. She's now a mother of 13. She was born after the team was created, and she cheered on the green and gold all her life, even watching the Bart Starr and Vince Lombardi-led years. The team's 100th anniversary is next year. I should bring her out there to the 50-yard line ever sing that for the whole stadium. Yeah, we should get our cheese head as well to go with that. <laughs> I'm sure she love that. That's neat. Good for her. Still ahead, a protest planned for this morning in Venice after a serious accident last week left four bike riders in critical condition with a live preview from the site of the crash. Now taking a live look outside at the beautiful skyline of the city of Sarasota. For more on what you can expect today, let's head over to meteorologist John Scalzi. It's a pretty shot, all right. We're going to have kind of a mix of sun and clouds, I think, but for the kids heading to the school buses, I don't really see much of a worry. It will be muggy, no doubt about that, and there could be an isolated sprinkle this morning. We'll go with a temperature of about 74 for pickup for drop off about 86 degrees, and it will be warm and humid. Should be fairly dry though by afternoon. Chance of an outside recess, I'll put it at about a 7 out of 10, only for an isolated shower. Back to you. Hi, I'm Tom. I've lost over 27 pounds and 24% body fat on Dr. V's program. I also cut my meds in half. If you'd like to lose up to a pound a day of fat, call me now for your free, no obligation appointment. Blue 32, Blue 32, ha <laughs> ha! It's the Ghetto Gridiron Challenge. The game's on to sell 2,000 vehicles. 12 teams compete for the number one spot. Score a great deal at every Ghetto dealership. Buy with zero down. Make no payments for 90 days. Choose from 14 of your favorite brands all on sale. Who will make it to the end zone? You decide. Rush to a Ghetto location near you or visit Ghetto.com. Ghetto's got it. Enjoy fine wine and great foods, all while supporting a great cause. It's the 17th annual Suncoast Food and Wine Fest, happening Saturday, November 10th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Premier Sports Campus in Lakewood Ranch. Taste hundreds of wines from around the world and sample great food from the area's finest restaurants. All proceeds go to local charities and rotary projects. For tickets and information, visit SuncoastFoodAndWineFest.com. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Uh, Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Here we go. We're gonna go out there to rain. We're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Go, Rose! Oh, look at the rain! Okay, quick. Oh, yeah, yes! So much fun. Mwah! so wet. You now have the power to prioritize your Facebook feed and get local news and information from the team you trust. Go to the ABC7 Sarasota page on Facebook. Give us a like, then click following and choose see first. That's it. Customize even more by choosing notifications. Choose breaking news, posts, live videos, anything you want to see in real time. Take control of your news feed and stay connected to what's happening in your community with ABC7 on Facebook. I'm Hazel, I'm 59 and I've lost 43 pounds on Dr. D's plan. I'm down four dress sizes and no longer take diabetes meds. If you'd like to lose up to a pound a day of fat, call me now for your free, no obligation appointment. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Air temperature coming in at 71 degrees from the dew point value exactly the same as 71. When temperature and dew point match, you get 100% relative humidity, and that's what we have outside right now. It's a sticky start to what will end up being a very humid afternoon. Um, not much changes over the next several days. We're kind of locked into this general southerly wind flow. 
east southeast right now will turn a little bit more southeast and then eventually do south by overnight tonight. That'll continue to funnel up the uh, humidity from the south, the moisture, and bring us some very sticky afternoons over the next several afternoons and warm days too. We'll look for 83 degrees by about 12 noon. Then by 3 p.m. we'll take it up to 86 degrees for a daytime high. So that's pretty, uh, pretty remarkable. Actually, this trend continues of abnormally warm days right straight through the rest of the week as well. Radar not showing a drop of rain around right now. We did have a few scattered areas of patchy drizzle down to the south of us, but they have since kind of dissipated away. We do still have some areas of showers and a few areas of drizzle just to the north, but those are not headed our way. They will be stuck there because that's where the warm front is located, which has brought us all of these warm afternoon temperatures. The warm front is connected to an area of low pressure that's producing some fairly heavy rainfall in parts of the Delmarva right now, stretching back up into the eastern Great Lakes. And then back to the west, we have another area of low pressure that could spell trouble for parts of the central deep south a little bit later today as it dives southward. That low pressure area could trigger off some showers and thunderstorms that reach severe limits later today. In fact, the likelihood of that is pretty good. And I think in this evening's broadcast, you'll be hearing stories of tornadoes and large thunderstorms, downpours of rain, that sort of thing. The good news is it bypasses us, lifts off to the north and to the east. We stay under the influence of a big ridge of high pressure and everything looks pretty good for the next several days. We'll call it a sun cloud mix today. There'll be periods of a little bit more sunshine, other periods when the sky will be cloudy. Then we'll look for warm and humid conditions probably for the next five days and not much in the way of any kind of a rainfall chance either. By the time we get to the weekend, we'll have a front that'll kind of sink its way south of us and just like this last one, stall out just to our south. It'll bring us a little bit of cloud cover, but it will also bring us a little bit of cooler air that we can enjoy over the weekend. So if you look at the future cast and put it into motion, you'll see that general southerly trend of showers lifting northward. And yes, there will be a few showers out in Gulf waters, and I wouldn't be shocked to see an isolated shower or sprinkle across our region today. But the rain chance is really very minimal. 10% or so, and that will probably be the case for the next several days. Isolated at most showers that we'll see. No big deal, really. There's the bullseye of severe weather threat today in the deep south. We'll continue to watch that through the afternoon. Again, this is an enhanced risk, which is a pretty high risk uh, from the Storm Prediction Center. The general trend will be for this to move off toward the mid-Atlantic coast where the threat will be reduced but still exists. And we bypass that entire severe weather threat completely. As we head into the next several days, we'll look for the possibility of maybe a few thunderstorms, but that would be about it. Here's the satellite view, and you can see all the cloud cover coming across the Gulf waters. And that's why I say a few of those clouds will be moving through our area, giving the sky at times a kind of milky appearance, but plenty of sunshine poking through that. As far as the tropics go, everything looks pretty quiet here. Nothing forecast to develop over the course of the next five days or so. So we're looking at a, a boating forecast that's pretty good. Winds will be out of the south. They'll be at about 10 knots, but lightening up a little bit this evening, coming in at about 5 to 10. And then overnight, turning southeast, coming in at about 10 knots once again. That'll give you two foot seas and a light chop on bay and inland waters. Water temperature now, 77 degrees. Forecast looks like this. We'll have today 86 degrees, our temperature, and then tomorrow, I think, Probably about the same. It'll probably be rain free tomorrow as well for Election Day and then over the next several days or for voting day rather. And then for the next several days, we'll look for um, about a 30 percent chance of showers on Friday, followed by slight rain chances right straight through the weekend. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Don. If it's not going to rain, no one has any excuses to not go out and vote. Taking a look now at first alert traffic. We're seeing some delays in Manatee County on Cortez Road if you're heading westbound there. Another slight delay on State Road 70 if you're heading eastbound at the intersection of US 301. Other than that, things are running fairly smoothly in Manatee County. In Sarasota County, some slight slowdowns on US 41 if you're heading northbound near the intersection of US 301. And then again on US 301 if you're heading southbound toward that same intersection. And in further south into southern Sarasota County, some minor delays on US 41 there. But other than that, things are running smoothly at 549 on your Monday morning.
Three of four cyclists remained in the hospital this morning after getting hit by a car last week. Today, some residents of the Meadow Run community in Venice want to see change in hopes of never seeing another bicyclist hit again. It happened last week on Center Road near Rockley Boulevard near the Plantation Country Club's back entrance. Marla Spence is there now with a preview of this morning's protest. Marla? Hey, Justin Ray, yeah, those protesters will be here on Center Road and East Village Drive in Venice to bring light to what they say is the cause of four bicyclists being hospitalized last week after getting hit by a car. Now, locals here in Venice plan to protest this morning. They want to see change to the speed limit. They want to see it reduced from 45 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour and also a traffic light right here on Center Road. Now, take a look. This is video of that accident from last week when a 91 year old woman hit all four cyclists. Now, as of yesterday, we were told one of the four cyclists was released from the hospital while one is in stable condition and the other two remain in serious critical condition. Now, we're told the four cyclists are a part of Coastal Cruisers Bicycle Club. The club's vice president tells us they go over bike safety rules and bike safety before hitting the, ro the road so they don't have a reason, so they do have a reason rather to believe that it's the state's fault for the amount of fatal bike bike and pedestrian accidents. The executive director of Florida Walks and Bikes tell, tells us Florida is now number one when it comes to bicyclist fatalities per capita. Florida was designed, unfortunately, in the age of the automobile, and we also have a very transient population in Florida. Um, so, you know, the, the, those, and plus this Florida has not really taken the, the steps necessary to make biking and walking safer. There's, there's a fault here with state government. And that protest will be happening as early as 845 this morning, where members of that bicycle club will be here in hopes to bring light to uh, what happened out here and hoping that the state will bring a traffic light out here in this area and reduce the speed limit. Reporting live in Venice, I'm Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. On to Health Smart now, a new advisory for parents not to spank their kids. That's a new policy statement from the American Academy of Pediatrics. The group advises mothers and fathers to use what it calls healthy forms of discipline, which includes positive reinforcement for appropriate behaviors, that is, and also setting expectations and limits. A new ultra-powerful opioid is about to make its way into hospitals. The Food and Drug Administration approved a drug called Desuvia on Friday. It's 10 times more powerful than fentanyl. That makes it 1,000 times more potent than morphine. Desuvia comes as a tablet in an applicator that healthcare providers administer under the tongue. Critics blasted the agency for bringing a new opioid to the market as the nation faces increasing opioid overdose deaths in what many call a crisis. The FDA insists it is managing the opioid crisis and the new drug is needed by patients to manage their pain. It is 5.52 right now. Looks like we've got some fog in this live picture of Atlanta, Georgia. It's uh, 56 degrees there, a little chillier than what we're experiencing here. It is a cloudy morning there, so I don't know if that's fog or cloud that we're seeing. Ah. More news and your forecast just ahead. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Cancer doesn't run in my family. That really was the farthest thing from my mind. I've been an athlete my whole life and I work in sports, so my mindset was this, let's fight. So our stories are all unique. So whatever you're going through, ask questions, get information and be involved. Don't ignore the signs, join the fight. I'm Tony Beasley and I'm a stage two colorectal cancer survivor. You got a king? Go fish! Oh, yeah.
It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied and a caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs, stop the crimes. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Keep up with the Sun Coast. Watch your favorite ABC 7 shows on your streaming device. Find out first at 4 with ABC 7 News at 4, weekdays on ABC 7. Here are the headlines. A search is on for a hit and run pickup driver, pickup truck driver who killed a man crossing the street in Bradenton Saturday night. It happened about 9 p.m. around 301 Boulevard East and 41st Avenue East. Plus a protest for change after four bicyclists were hit in Venice. Residents of the Meadow Hill community want to see the speed limit dropped from 45 to 35 and a traffic light installed at the scene of the crash. That's Center Road and Rockley Boulevard. The protest starts at 845 this morning. And election day is tomorrow. Candidates are out making their final statements. The polls open tomorrow at 7 a.m. And we'll have the elections supervisor, Ron Turner, here in the uh, 5 o'clock hour. All right, I can't wait. Yep, tomorrow morning, finally it's here. More news next hour right here on Good Morning Suncoast.